If you've been a subscriber on this channel for a little while, you'll know that I love fun, quirky, small SUVs. And no one does fun, quirky, small SUV better than Mini with the Countryman. And last year in the summer, I spent some time with the latest generation, now outgoing Mini Countryman. And it reminded me just how much I love their cars, driving engagement and tons and tons of personality. But there's now a new Mini Countryman to replace it. And how do I feel about this very different latest generation car? Hi guys, I'm Tish and welcome back to my channel Auto Social UK. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look around the latest Mini Countryman, looking at all of the changes, all of the tech and trying to decide if I like these changes. So if that sounds good, then please keep watching. And if you like new car reviews and car content, then this is the place to be. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. So first off, let's kick things off with the most controversial thing for me, and that is the styling. Don't even get me started on the interior. We'll go there in a moment but let's start around the front of the car. Now it is recognizable as a countryman, but there is a lot of differences. It now has a much squarer feel about it. In fact, it almost has a touch of Land Rover about it. It's got that much squarer stance. Of course, the iconic round mini headlamps are no more. And I have to admit, this is something which I really am mourning. I loved those red head headlamps. Now, if you remember, I mentioned on the Aura Funky Cat that it had these funky lights. And if we unlock the Mini, you've got the same funky light signature, but these headlamps are actually squared off. So kind of, the Funky Cat is more of a Mini now than the Mini actually is. But elsewhere, the styling... I'm kind of undecided. I really need you guys' help. So comment down below what you think of this car because for me, I don't quite love it as much as the previous generation. I do think it no longer has that mini style about it. It looks a bit samey to everything else on the road and I think that's a shame. I do like this paintwork. You've got this cool blue colour and actually it's contrasted with these almost goldy elements, which I do quite like. Mini are very good at putting colours together. But is that the case for the interior? I need to show you this. Let's go inside. My goodness. Where do I even start with the interior of this car? Well, I know where to start. The doors. The doors are probably the most controversial bit, aren't they? That blend between the two colours. It's the only bit I'm not actually too sure of. You know what I think of the rest of it? I absolutely love it and I can't believe that I love it because I was coming in here thinking I'm going to hate all of this fabric everywhere and I'd seen a lot of the seats which are very fabric as well and I just thought I'm really not going to like it but I'm so pleasantly surprised. It's so vibrant, it's so fun, it's so mini in here. It's fabulous. Of course, the first thing that you're struck with is this absolutely massive infotainment screen, which I'll talk about in a bit more detail in a little bit later on about all of the fun things that you can play around with on the screen because there's so much to go into. In fact, hopefully Mini are going to send me this car for a little bit longer so we can do a tech deep dive. Buttons. Now, there's not many buttons, no physical climate. Everything's in the screen. You've got climate always in one place. It always stays on the sides. But I must admit, it's a little bit fiddly to use when driving. Underneath, you've got a few buttons. Some you'll recognise, some you won't. So you've got a volume button, which I keep using to turn the car on and off. But then I have to remember that you've actually got, of course, the glowing start-stop dial. So that's what you use to turn it on and off. You've got your drive mode buttons and then you've got a few shortcuts along the bottom. Really nice one. You've got a shortcut there which takes you straight to your driver assistance. So you can turn that off. And also you've got your drivetrain and chassis so you can set up the car so it's a little bit more comfortable if you wish. Fabulous seats. I love these seats so much. I can imagine these are quite a pricey upgrade. So I'll pop it on the screen just how much exactly they are. But you've got this lovely soft tan leather and then you've got the contrasting blue and red stitching. This is very intricate, very beautiful. And actually, 
with that kind of strange colour combination, it does tie in very nicely. The steering wheel, now this is a huge odd change for me. It's actually really hard to get used to. It's really chunky. Very, very chunky on the sides. If you've got very, very small hands, you might actually find that a little bit difficult. But I love this, the fabric strap at the bottom. Now, this is a BMW steering wheel, so that's why it's different to the mini steering wheel. Um, and all the functions work really well. Adaptive cruise control, you've got your volume on there, shortcuts to your different functions for your radio, etc. Um, but yeah, the contrasting stitching, the gold, which matches on the outside, and also with these kind of door handles, that's very, very cool. And you've got this strap. Yeah, I'm quite taken by it, actually. I really didn't think I was going to like the interior. I thought it was going to feel way, way, way too stripped back. You've got armrest here, which slides backwards and forwards. You've got two USB-C charge points, which are just tucked down there. You've got this strange little section here, which has a little bit of storage with this fabric strap. Again, didn't think I'd like that, but the colours all really match in well. Cup holders, and then you've got a couple of sections for storage and somewhere to charge your mobile phone as well. You've got wireless charging. You've got a small glove box there, and you've got quite big door cards, so you should be able to fit lots of items in there. Now, another thing I'm not too sure of at the moment is the head-up display. So the head-up display is almost working as a driver display completely because there's nothing in front of the driver. You've got the main screen here, which actually has your speed that you're doing. So not sure how you feel about all of your passengers knowing how fast you're going, but I would prefer just a plain screen. It feels like it's trying too hard to be something fancy when realistically just a plain screen would have been much better for me. Unlike other car manufacturers who have been slimming their model lineup, building a Mini is still a bit of a minefield. The Classic kicks things off at £29,325 for a car with 170 horsepower, 17-inch wheels and a more basic interior with mixed cloth seats. The exclusive model comes in at £31,825 and that gets the goldy exterior elements as well as bigger 18-inch wheels. You also get lever effect seats available in three colours, which I was so convinced that you would need to pay more for. The Sport model still gets the same 170 horsepower, but you get a sportier looking model. In fact, the styling mirrors that of the JCW. After those three models, you can get the same specifications again, but you can opt for all four. Four-wheel drive models will increase the power output to 218 horsepower. Lastly, the Countryman is still available in the beefy John Cooper Works format, and that will cost you £41,520. This shares all the styling of the Sport, but boosts the power to an impressive 300 horsepower. You also get some red brake calipers to hint at his abilities. And if you thought we were done there with the confusion, then buckle in, because here come the packs. The Countryman is available with three specification packs. The first, at £2,800, brings things like heated seats, a head-up display and high beam assist. Level 2, at £5,300, adds the pan roof, Harman Kardon sound system and an enhanced driver safety suite. And lastly, at a hefty 7500 you have the Level 3, with electric memory seats, augmented reality sat-nav and lots more. All this into consideration, my exclusive specification car with smoky green paint, 20-inch windmill spoke wheels, black roof and level 3 package comes in at £41,125. Ouch. I know that many of you will be wondering, but Tish... What about the electric version of the Countryman? I thought that would be first. Well, interestingly, unlike Jeep with the Avenger, who released the electric and then a plug-in hybrid, I bet you didn't even know they've done that. They've kept that quiet. And in fact, I'd quite like to get one of those on the channel. But back to the Mini, they've launched it as the petrol first. And though that seems a little bit strange as everything's moving towards electric, I think that's a very clever move at the moment. There's a lot of negativity around electric cars. And whether that's right or wrong, and I don't want to start a debate today, it seems that there is still a demand for petrol cars for a little while to come. So I think this is a great option. And in fact, they 
they expect 70% at the moment of Mini Countrymans to be released as combustion engines. They expect that to rise as it carries on into the next few years, but for now, it's going to be around a 70-30 split. And it's nice to spend time with some petrol. Of course, it doesn't always have the best personality traits because when you stick your foot down hard on the accelerator, there's a flare up from the engine and the gearbox and there's a little bit of a delay when it comes to power. You don't get that delay with electric cars. But most of the time, 90% of the time, it copes really well and it's brilliant around town. I'm so surprised about how quiet it is. And I think that's a big thing about this car. I've been really shocked by quality. It feels very high quality. I thought that by adding loads of material in the cabin, it would lose that. But not at all. The engine stays really well refined. Those door clunks as you open and close them, they just sound really high quality. And I've been really, really impressed. But what about driving engagement? Because we know that that is something which Mini always go on about. It's that good saying, the Mini go-kart feel, something that they've pretty much patented. And I'm really pleased to say that it does have the Mini go-kart feel. Although, a bloody big go-kart at that but it has managed to keep that kind of personality trait about it and they've done that by keeping the suspension and the steering reasonably stiff compared to competitors they could have decided to make the mini countryman a big wafty suv and take away all that personality but it still definitely has some go-kart feel although nothing like you get from the smaller hatches but I'm still really pleased it kind of has a midway in between the two. And outgoing previous generations of Countrymans were always well known for being some of the most uncomfortable cars or SUVs that you could drive. And I'm pleased to say that it has improved in recent years. Yes, on these bumpy Cotswolds roads, I do still feel a little bit of the bumps, but that's probably because I've got it in a slightly sportier mode. And like I said, they've gone for a slightly sportier setup than going for the wafty drive. So it is far more comfortable, but you don't lose that connection. I am going to be honest, when it comes around to the rear of this car, it does look quite bulbous. I don't think it quite has the style of the previous gen vehicle. And it's massive as well, isn't it? It feels a lot longer. Now, maybe one of the reasons why they've made this car bigger than the previous generation is to allow for a midway for the Aceman. So that's going to be in between both this and also the mini hatch. And that's going to give you a bit more space, but be a bit more compact in size. So if you want something like that, then you may have to wait for the Aceman, but also the Aceman will be fully electric. So no petrol versions, unfortunately. Of course, around the back here, you've got some really cool rear lights that are finished in that Union Jack, which is very iconic to Mini, despite the fact that it's now built in Germany. So maybe it should be the German flag instead. But these are actually customised so if you don't like having those Union Jacks, you can swap them out for something else. Now, with that added space, you do now get a ton more space inside of the boot. If I can work out how to get in it. Oh, no. How do I get in? There we go. It actually wasn't that difficult. I was just making it look hard. So there is a huge amount of space now in this boot. Inside here, you'll find a generous 460 litres. That should be enough to swallow everything you need for family life. Push chairs, shopping, luggage. The load area is uniform in shape, while underfloor storage is also generous. Although, the boot's high load lip does mean that you have to lug heavier items quite far off the ground. All Countrymen's come with roof rails fitted as standard. So as it is so much bigger, how does it work as a family car? Well, for starters, I'm not too impressed with these doors. They don't actually open that wide, so loading child seats in might be a problem. But really, that's where the problems stop. Look how much space I've got. This is worlds apart from the first generation Mini Countryman, which really wasn't very big at all. I have got enormous amounts of headroom. It has got a panoramic sunroof in this version, but I'm not impeding on my kind of height at all. I've got my sunglasses on as well, so that's given me some extra height, but it's wonderful. And it's very reclined as well. Super comfortable. 
it feels like a chauffeur's car. You feel like you could be chauffeured around in it. Again, you've got that wonderful tan soft leather and you've got the pull-out armrest with a couple of cup holders. No through loading. That would have made it even more kind of practical, but I don't think it's going to be essential in this car. I also love the detailing. Look at that. I love that fabric. It matches together with some of the fabric on the front of the car as well. It's just so cohesive. You've got some door pockets back here. Not door pockets, sorry. You've got some seat pockets there. They feel really high quality. And something that's really surprised me is you've got a really deep kind of place to put your legs. So even if you've got six foot legs, six foot legs, if you've got six foot legs, you're going to be huge. But even if you are six foot with long legs, you've got loads of space to put your feet. I am wondering whether when it comes to the electric version, that kind of sunk in boot, um, sunk in floor will then be flat. I'm not too sure. We'll have to wait and see. Obviously, there is a bit of a transmission tunnel here, which again, if that is through to the electric car, will be a bit of a shame. But you've got two USB-C charge points there. You've got some controls for your air vents. This feels very fancy. I like that. And you've got just a little bit of a useless storage, really, because if you put anything in that, it's just going to fly out. So I'm not really sure. But I guess it does mean that if you're sitting here, you could tuck your feet underneath there. Actually, I guess that's what it's for. And in that case, that's actually really smart. It makes me laugh that when we come to these events, I always say I'd like to drive the car that everybody's buying. And they said, OK, that's probably going to be the Mini Countryman C. That's the model that we expect to sell the most of. And I was expecting to have a stripped back car with not much spec. But this car is fully loaded. So it's not exactly the car that they think people are going to be buying. It's got Harman Kardon. It's got head up display. It's got the augmented reality so it's packed full of stuff and of course probably not all these things are essential what's essential to me i like to have heated seats i like to have a heated steering wheel satellite navigation i think we could do without that nowadays and the harman kardon sound system it's nice to have an upgraded sound system but for me it's not essential something i am loving however is the augmented reality. I really like this tech. And for me, it's becoming one of those things that I'm going to start thinking about having in my future cars. You see, I'm not very good when it comes to directions. With my dyslexia, I find it difficult to follow satellite navigations. But with the augmented reality, it has arrows exactly where you should be going. It almost makes it feel like it's driving for dummies. You you will go this way. But actually, I kind of need that. And it means that I've been able to navigate to my destinations without having to do constant U-turns, which is definitely something I'm doing often. What other bits of spec would I want? Well, I think that's pretty much all of it covered. I don't really mind about rear view cameras. It's never really been a bother of mine. And I still don't think this car's big enough to need one as standard. But I would like parking sensors. That's another thing. The panoramic sunroof is really lovely. It's making this cabin feel so light and airy. So maybe that would be on my list as well. Hmm. This is getting a little bit expensive. The funny thing when it comes to the Mini Countryman is despite them changing so much about it, and when I first saw pictures of this car, I said, I outright don't like it. I much prefer the previous generation. And seeing the interior, I had a lot of worries about whether they'll be able to include that plushness that Mini was so used to whilst using some much more stripped back materials and a far more basic cabin. But I'm actually really surprised. Despite all of those changes, this still very much feels like it has a mini personality. It's still super fun. And sure, the interior isn't going to be for everyone, but it never has been. And as always, there's lots of options to choose when specking your mini countryman to get the one that's right for you. But let me know, what do you think of the latest generation of Mini Countryman? I sure think it's going to take a little while longer for this to sink in. But let me know what you think down below. If you have enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see more, then you know what to do. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Until next time, guys. See you later.